Assalamu alaikum. Dear learners, I hope you are safe and sound. This series of video lectures is going to cover a range of flow sensors that are used in industries to measure flow of either solids, which are of course in powder or grinded form, liquids and gases. Before we can dive into the discussion of various flow sensors, we need to understand that what flow is and what we need to measure. When anything is in motion, we can say that it is flowing. But this terminology is specifically reserved for gases, liquids, slurries and solids in powdered or grinded form. So in fact, what we are going to do is we are going to measure the speed with which a certain fluid is moving. And by measuring that speed, we can figure out how much mass or volume of that fluid is being transferred from one place to the other place in a given time. You can think of range of applications that requires you to monitor or meter the flow of certain fluids involved. A very simple example can be filling of bottles in some FMCG company or operation of some pneumatic gripper attached to the end of a robotic arm which is trying to grasp something. Moreover, cement which is being packaged into bags, water that is being supplied to some household, gas that is being supplied to consumers or even petrol with which you fill up your car's tank. So once we have understood the importance of metering the flow of fluids, we can think of various techniques and methods through which we can achieve our objective. In practice, there are two major categories of sensors that are used for measuring the flow rate. One category directly figures out the mass of the fluid which is flowing from one location to the other location in a unit time whereas the other category figures out the volume flow rate of the fluid. In the second category, if we know the density of the involved fluid, we can multiply the density with the volume flow rate to get the mass flow rate. Keeping these two categories in view, I have divided this lecture into two major sections. In the first one, I am going to discuss only the mass flow rate sensors, whereas the volume flow rate sensors will be discussed in the second portion. So to start the discussion of mass flow rate sensors, these sensors can be used to measure the flow of solids, liquids or gases. Note that by solids, I mean solids in powdered, grinded or in form of a slurry. The type of the flow rate sensor that can be used is dictated by the state in which the material is. That is, some flow rate sensors are more suitable for powdered or grinded materials whereas the other are more suitable for materials in fluid form. The very first method is in fact a combination of methods in which solid particles are traveling on an open conveyor. Therefore, these methods are combined under the heading of conveyor-based methods. The working principle of these methods is very straightforward. That is, we measure the weight of the section of a conveyor on which some grinded or crushed solid particles are traveling, convert that weight into mass and multiply it with the speed of the conveyor and lastly divide it by the length of this section which we were considering will give us the mass flow rate. This schematic over here shows the working principle which I have just described. Different kind of weighing systems can be used to measure the weight of a particular section of a conveyor and you can use the formula that was given in the previous slide to figure out the mass flow rate. If for some reasons weighing cannot be incorporated under the conveyor, then other kind of non-invasive and contactless methods for approximating the weight of the material present on the conveyor may be implemented. One of the transducer called the nuclear mass flow rate sensor utilizes gamma ray source that is emitted from one side of the conveyor and travels towards the other side where there is a receiver. The material present on the conveyor will definitely absorb some gamma rays flowing through it and the receiver will not receive the exact amount of gamma rays that were generated by the transmitter. The amount of absorption of gamma rays can be calibrated with the amount of mass of the material present on the conveyor through which the gamma rays have traveled. Obviously, these methods have safety issues associated with them. Therefore, use of such methods require proper licensing from the competent authority. Moreover, there are only limited type of materials for which these methods may be implemented. The next mass flow rate sensor is called Coriolis flow meter. 
and it is quite widely used mass flow rate sensor for mass flow rate measurements of liquids. However, the advanced versions of it can be used for gases as well. The main working principle of this sensor is based on generation of Coriolis force and measuring its effect. You might have heard the word Coriolis in relation to metrology or some similar situation because Coriolis force is responsible for the cyclones and the movement pattern of clouds all around our earth. However, sticking to our topic, Coriolis force is generated when a particle moving in a particular direction is accelerated orthogonally to the direction of motion. This force is responsible for making the particle go in a cyclone-like motion. The Coriolis force which the particle experiences is directly proportional to the mass of the particle. These meters are available in different shapes whereas the objective is same in all cases. The objective is to divide the fluid flow in two halves and allow them to flow through two parallel channels. These channels are excited through a vibrating source whereas two sensors are installed to measure these vibrations. Now if there is no flow, both pipes will vibrate with vibrations 180 degrees out of phase. And if we can shift one of the wave by half the wavelength, then both waves will be in phase. When there is some flow, the vibrations will cause the particles of the fluid to accelerate orthogonal to the direction of motion, hence the particles will experience Coriolis force. This force will disrupt the vibrations being induced into the channels. Now the vibration sensed by the vibration sensors will become out of phase. The mass flow rate will be directly proportional to the phase difference between the vibrations picked by the vibration sensors. Moreover, Coriolis flow meters may also be used to figure out the density of the fluid as it is inversely proportional to the square of the sensed vibration frequency. So if the density increases, the frequency will decrease and vice versa. Coriolis flow meters are expensive accurate devices that can achieve measurement uncertainties in the range of plus minus 0.2% of full scale. Moreover, the mechanical vibrations make these devices prone to mechanical fatigue that can reduce the lifetime significantly. On top of that, abrasion or corrosion due to fluid particles is another problem associated with these flow meters. Last but not the least, the diversion of the fluid into smaller cross-section pipes causes a significant pressure drop in the line. These disadvantages limit the use of Coriolis flow meters, but the accuracy and direct mass flow rate measurement allows them to be the first choice if you can manage the expenses a bit. The last mass flow rate sensor that I am going to discuss is called Thermal Mass Flow Rate Sensor. Primarily, this sensor is used to measure the mass flow rate of gases. However, a modified version of it is extensively used for liquids as well. The main working principle of this mass flow rate sensor utilizes thin probes encased into a housing probe. Both probes have suitable temperature sensors embedded into them. Mostly arteries are used over here. The temperature sensor will give the temperature of both probes at all times. One of the probe is called a reference sensor whereas the other one is called a flow sensor. The flow sensor additionally has a heater embedded into it. The heater heats the probe and the temperature sensor senses the temperature. So now we are getting two temperature readings, one from the reference sensor and the other one from the flow sensor. Of course there will be some temperature difference between these two probes. Now, if these probes are inserted into the flowing fluid, the fluid will take away the heat from the heated probe and hence its temperature will drop. At this point, there are two versions of this mass flow rate sensor. In the first one, the temperature difference between the two probes will be directly proportional to the mass flow rate of the fluid. Whereas in the second version, additional power is supplied to the heater present in the flow sensor probe so that the difference between the reference and the flow sensor probe is tried to maintain. In this version, the power required by the heater to maintain the temperature difference will be directly proportional to the mass flow rate of the fluid. 
In a modified version of this sensor, which is specially designed for liquids, two separate temperature sensors are placed equidistant from the heater, one upstream and the other one downstream, as shown over here. If there is no flow in the pipe, then the heat from the heater will disperse equally on all sides, hence both temperature sensors are going to read the same temperature. However, if there is some flow in the pipe, then the fluid particles will take the heat from the heater towards the sensor which is installed downstream. Hence, the downstream sensor will sense higher temperature, whereas the upstream sensor will sense a lower temperature. This temperature difference between the two sensors will now be directly proportional to the mass flow rate. These are the thermal mass flow rate sensors that are typically used in industries to measure the mass flow rate of the fluid. The sensors can generate the control signal as well as they have a display which can give direct reading to the observer. This was everything about the mass flow rate sensors that I have to talk about. The next videos will talk about the other category of the flow rate sensors that is the volume flow rate sensor. It is highly recommended to view the next videos because in industry volume flow rate sensing is much more common as compared to the mass flow rate sensing. Thank you and take care.